Hello, my name is Dylan, and today we're going to be talking about the Ramachandran's plot. The Ramachandran's plot was originally developed in 1963 by G.N. Ramachandran along with two others. This is a computer model that allows us to visualize the energetically stable conformations of the bond angle psi against phi for each of the amino acid residues in a protein. It's important to remember that this plot is going to be plotting psi against phi. To understand the Ramachandran's plot, we must first look at the bond angles of the amino acid residues. Over here, we have a two amino acid residue long peptide chain. The, thing, the bond that's going to be connecting these two amino acids is going to be the peptide bond. The peptide bond will be denoted by the Greek symbol omega, along with psi and phi bonds. Omega is unique though. Omega is unique because of its double bond characteristic. It gets this double bond characteristic because of nitrogen's lone pair of electrons that it's able to donate to, make, to form this double bond making this structure. This structure is going to be a lot less common than the original structure, but it does occur so much giving it this double bond characteristic. Now why do we care? We care because this is going to cause the omega to, the, the atoms connected to the omega no, no freedom to rotate. So they're not able to rotate. They're going to be stuck at that planar position. But however, the psi and the phi are mostly single bonds. So these single bonds are free to rotate. And this rotation is going to give the structures such as the alpha helix and the beta sheet. So knowing this, we can look at the Ramachandran's plot. Looking at this, we see a couple things pop out. One is that we see a lot of amino acids conformations in this region. And this is because of steric hindrance. Right here, we see none because it's at zero. At zero, we're going to have steric clashing steric hindrance. But at 180, negative 180, we're going to have them far apart. I like to picture them as two mortal enemies. These two mortal enemies hate each other, and they're just trying to get away the farthest away as possible. So they're going to be looking to get like this, not like this. So if they were at zero, they'd be like the two groups would be like this. But if at 180, negative 180, they'd be like this, and they're happy at this direction. So in this area, we can see the right-handed, right-twisted beta sheets on this little purple swiggly, the parallel beta sheets over here, the anti-parallel beta sheets here, and the collagen triple helix right here. This is, the, this is very stable, although we do see, as far as the helix, a little bit, they're a little bit closer together. And this is alright too, I like to picture them as liking each other a little bit more, but they still don't like each other, so they still don't like to be that close. So right here, we can see the right-handed helix, and over here, we can see the left-handed helix. So just a review, a guy named G.N. Ramachandran came up with the Ramachandran's plot as a way to visualize energetically stable conformations of the amino acid residues in a protein structure. The omega bond is going to have partial double bond characteristics and will be free to rotate as much as the sine phi angles, which will give this the proteins, the unique structures they all have. It's important to realize where all of them are located as far as testing goes. And that is all on Ramachandran's plot. Thank you for watching. The Teaching Center. UF's Learning Resource Center.